What's up, everybody? This episode of the Smoke Tire Podcast is brought to you by Policy Genius. Look, there's never a bad time to save money, but now more than ever, finding smart ways to put some cash back in your pocket can make a big difference. One way to do that is simply to save on the things you already have to pay for, like home insurance. If you own a home, reshopping your home insurance rates with Policy Genius could save you a good chunk of change. And the best part is, you barely need to lift a finger to do it. First, just head over to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius will compare your policy against options from top insurers to make sure you're getting the right home insurance coverage at the best possible price. If Policy Genius finds you a better rate than what you're currently paying, they'll do all the work to get you switched. Own a car too? Policy Genius will compare your home and auto policies across different insurers and even mix and match to find you savings. They save their customers an average of $1,127 per year doing just that. So if you'd like to put a little cash back in your pocket right now, see how much you can save by reshopping your home insurance rates at policygenius.com. We're also brought to you by Roman. You know what Roman is? It's for your dick. That's right. What? Any, that's right. Anyone who's dealt with erectile dysfunction knows how awkward it can be to talk about in person. Luckily, there's a simple, convenient solution to get the treatment you need without leaving the couch. Our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that connects you with a doctor licensed in your state, all from the comfort of your home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need right from your house. Grab your phone or computer, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. If the doctor decides the treatment is right for you, your medication can be shipped right to your door with free two-day shipping. You get unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you've got questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there's no commitments, cancel at any time. So if you're struggling with ED, stay home and go to GetRoman.com slash tire for a free online visit and two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash tire for a free online visit and two-day shipping. Last but certainly not least, we are brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Now that your, th- your thing is all Roman and standing, make it look good. Manscaping offers, Manscaped offers precision-engineered engin- to- tools for your family jewels. It rhymes, folks. Tools for the jewels. Tools they, for your tools. They obsess over the technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Guys, I, look at me, been through trimmers. I know how this goes. You can really hurt yourself by putting the right, the wrong trimmer in the wrong place. I'm serious. You can do this. That's why the team at Manscaped spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. They just released the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0. <laughs> What a phenomenal name for a phenomenal product. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. When I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you take a longer shave. Even if you really relax, really relax, you're talking about like... 10 to 15 ball shaves here. The water resistant technology allows you to do it in the shower. How do you not love that, guys? And it's got an LED LED light, which illuminates grooming areas like a pair of HIDs on the car for a closer, more precise trim. Here is the deal. 20% off and free shipping with code TIRE at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. That's 20% off and free shipping with code TIRE at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com, code TIRE. There it is. 
All right, on this episode of the show, me and Zach still at the crib, but we got Alana Shear zooming in. Uh, hopefully the audio is better than last time. Alana has been a career uh, automotive journalist who inexplicably writes about Mopar wing cars over and over again. <laughs> she likes old trucks, has a fleet of uh, really strange vehicles at her house that's always rotating that her and her husband Tom uh, keep running with sweat and love and usually not money, which is very admirable. Uh, a lot of rules. A lot of share on the Smoke Tire Podcast. Hello, <laughs> the Smoke Tire Podcast. We are adrift again. Still, again, still. Zach and I are adrift in between studios at my mm-hmm. living room. We're drinking today for, well, I'm drinking for a different reason than I was drinking yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I was drinking for happiness. Today I'm drinking for sadness. But it doesn't matter because we're going to turn it around with one more sippy sip. <laughs> because we've got a lot of sheer on the other end of the zoom yo Hi. air cheers air cheers air oh, not cheers. with water air cheers, air cheers. Okay. cheers. Oh, up there that camera and a has got a vintage beer yeah tell, <laughs> tell people tell people the beer you're drinking and the uh this your lap your computer stand what is it um okay well so first of all i want to back up a second because when zach asked if i could do this remotely he was like you know, what kind of recording equipment do you have? I was like, I, I have a laptop. <laughs> um, he's, he was like, all right, well, do you have headphones? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And I do. I have these headphones, but I can't find the cord. I think the puppies ate them. So I had to like dig through my suitcase and find some old like airplane um, headphones. So, like yeah. that you stole from an airline? That you well, no, paid? like the, the like freebie ones that you oh, get. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. You're like a you have vintage in every way. Yeah. Like, you, you have an old um, gramophone that maybe we could use? <laughs> Do you know that I never, until I started, until quarantine, you know, when quarantine started, like everybody started a podcast or everybody started an Instagram show. Like the, it was like, I got, I must have gotten a hundred invitations to do people's new Instagram show. Would you be my very first guest? Whatever. <laughs> right. And I did a couple of them, and then I was like, this is too much stuff. But for the, for the first time ever, I had to use AirPods. And I have one of those ear shapes where the, the AirBud or the, the Apple headphones, they don't stay in my ears. Yeah, me too. They just fall out. You too? Yep. So I had to use like these, but I, I needed something that, that worked to do these Instagram live shows. So I'm doing these shows. I just keep like, I'm constantly just like sticking my fingers in my ears trying to put the things. Do you but- have them? They're still in the plastic wrapping from when I bought my <laughs> my new phone because I, I you know how you get upsold when you're at mm-hmm. the actual store and you're mm-hmm. like oh yeah I need all of the accessories and then you get home and you're like oh I I hate your I I hate them <laughs> I didn't need those at all no because I have like good headphones because I listen my phone sends sounds to my ears it my head to my headphones my headphones don't need to send sound back I don't talk on headphones you know what I mean. Oh, I talk on the right. I like this, or I'm in the car. I'm not. I don't, gotcha. I don't walk yeah. around with the fucking AirPods on like I'm a schizophrenic, fucking talking to myself. This happens right. on the beach all the time. You're like, okay, is that person crazy? Or that's why they had to make the ear pot, earbuds uh, white. So you at least yeah. be like, ah, he's not. If they made him flesh color. The, the wire was nice because you could tell that they were probably talking to somebody. Yeah, and then you didn't interrupt them or run away from them. Right. It is one of. I mean, there's a lot of douchey things that people can do in Los Angeles. And I, I hesitate to throw the word douchey around a lot because there's certainly things that I do in my life that people might describe as douchey and they might be right. And that's okay. You mean like own a Lamborghini? No, no. That's a classic. <laughs> that is a classic. If I owned a fucking, if I owned a Huracan with rims and my Instagram tag on yeah. the quarter window, the Instagram that tag. might be a, something different. I will defend my little red car <laughs> to the fucking death. I love Although, your car. Safari 911s might be peak douche at this point, but that's okay. That that notwithstanding. No, they're, just, they're popular, but they're still good. <laughs> but the Instagram yeah. handle on the window of the car. Yeah, no, it, that's like, not good. No one's sitting on the highway going, oh, oh yeah, I'm going to follow it right now. I'm going to look them up. We've been going to uh, COVID and coffee at Bill's. Uh, and everyone wears masks. It's cool, but uh, it's been the it's been the cars and coffee. And around, I get there at like seven fifty five. It's quiet. By eight fifteen, it's a shit show. And <laughs> then by like nine thirty, 
M3 Club is rolling through. 945, the Challenger Club. It's, they're running like parade laps. It's crazy. Around 10 o'clock, it's Club Huracan. <laughs> <laughs> and every stanced out Huracan on rims comes through with Instagram ta- hag- t- uh, handles on everything. It's very funny. <laughs> I don't think I stayed long enough to, to see Club Huracan when, when I met you and uh, Musto there last month. Yeah, in the in the month of June, that show took an interesting twist. <laughs> People started hearing about it and showing up from all over the place. Um, but I loved your uh, – what's the color of your Trans Am other you than know, brown? Oh, it, it, does have, um, it does have a name, and I just looked it up, and I've already forgotten it again. Because basically, other than Chrysler, nobody really gave, like, super memorable names to their car colors. So Yeah, the Americans like, didn't I think it's called Barkley, Barkley Brown. That's a Barkley. sucky name. That's like a, dog That's a name. stupid name. 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 Yeah. No, Porsche, Lamborghini does a good job. I mean, Ferrari colors are really fun. Um, do, does anyone in Japan, does Japan have any fun colors? I don't think they do. You just mean name wise? Yeah, no name. Yeah. They don't have any mm-hmm. names. The J- know, Japanese they're, are very, they're, get red. they're very serious. Like the they Mazda have, 3 red is awesome, but I don't know what? The Mazda's, Mazda's red is Oh no, it's a nice but, color, yeah. but it's not called like no. fucking, you know, right. Joy Joy Red. Chrysler is the best at it for sure. Yeah, they, they were really... They were really working at it, I think. Yeah, they had although, somebody pretty funny in the marketing department. Yeah, when they no, date grape was not an official name. That was just no, it was statutory name. grape. Oh, statutory <laughs> what? grape. What? It's a better joke than date grape, actually. <laughs> well, there was, you know, I mean, it was back in the '60s. They didn't have date grape back then. That was just was a, normal a dating. This is like a, a real. No, nah, no, it wasn't printed in the fucking brochures. Okay, it was like the Matthew it? McConaughey's of the Dazed and Confused world. I just like, never heard that. I've heard Plum Crazy up, Purple, which is a picked very up big a new Hemi, bro. What color? <laughs> Statutory grape. Wow, <laughs> it's funny when it's not true. If you found out I was fucking kids, then it would oh make it God. sick, right, Crystalia? That's oh. how that works. It is when you. All tell right, dirty we're starting jokes, off good. When you tell great. fucking dirty jokes and kind of a wink, wink, doesn't everyone think this terrible thing? Thank God none of us are doing it. And then you find out the guy's fucking doing it. Who makes all the jokes about murder? That's who we need to look right? at. Right? But Louis C.K.'s whole career was like, man, we all think this fucked up shit, don't we? And then you found out he's fucking jacking it in front of people. And you go, ew, he was really doing it. Gross. <laughs> You're not supposed to do the thing. That was a joke, Louis. I didn't know you were taking that shit seriously, you freak. Yeah, it's only funny if you're making fun of someone else and you don't do it. Well, if it's like a hypothetical, like, don't we all think this terrible thing? Not like a confession. (laughs) When it's a confession, it's bad. Well, and also, I mean, I feel like there are different terrible things that are okay to think. Like, you could be like, don't we all think this terrible thing, most people's babies are ugly? Like, that's okay, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, don't we all think, you know, that it'd be fun to jack off in front of, like, you know, coworkers? Not no, no. That's like a, that sounds like anyway, a nightmare. That was yeah. a hard left. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yo, on your Instagram the other day, and I took Instagram off my phone, so I don't have as much of it. There was a Corvette that was made of multiple Corvettes. Yes. What can you? Can you? Wow. Zach's got a picture of it up. What the fuck is this thing? <laughs> all right. So, um, first of all, that is my plumber's car. Get out of here. Yeah, of my plumber. Is. Yeah. So. So we were, we're having some work done on the house. The plumber came over. Uh, he'd been telling us he's been working on this Corvette. He uh, brings it over and it is a 71 Corvette that has a 63 split window bubble grafted into the back and then like a, a sort of a bigger ducktail in the back. And uh, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, what's really cool is that it works it actually yeah, seems it like it works it's got a little bit of boat tail riv going on which is good yeah i think that if you if you didn't know it shouldn't be that way you wouldn't necessarily know and if if you can imagine it all painted one color I, you know i mean i think yeah. corvette people are gonna be mad all the time the but- fact that the back half is primer really tells you that something has been done to you. <laughs> right but are, yeah. are, the, are the rear fenders still but- c3 fenders or are they from the c2 no, um, C3 fenders and C3 tail. Because if you can picture, um, if you can picture the C2, it's uh, it's kind of flat in the back. 
Yeah. The whole yeah. car is flatter. Car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes to a sort of flat. Right. Flat it comes to a yeah. So like, yeah. So did he did he graft the sixty uh, the sixty three's window onto? Basically, I'm wondering why is so much of the car primer if it's C three fenders? Did he just like sand it down, graft the thing on, weld it, and then now he's going to repaint it? Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, it's all fiberglass, so. Um, it's, oh, right. okay. it's, um, <laughs> yeah, Corvettes aren't made of metal, Zach. I, I have still, I have fucked that up in print before. Not, <laughs> not like, um, just because you you get used to, I was talking about the chassis being like good. And so I said something like all steel and then a million <laughs> people killed me and now I'm dead. Yeah. But, um, of, I was also like, to oh, the editor. <laughs> it's like 1968. I'm like, back then it had to be made of metal. It's like, nope, <laughs> no, no. So um, yeah, they base uh, they bought the bubble. You can buy, you know, you can buy all yeah. the Corvette parts. Cause, yeah. And um, so they bought the bubble, and grafted that into the seventy one fiberglass. And so I assume that that was a lot of a lot of work and a lot of sanding. And it was probably a, a lot easier to just. I don't know if the whole back end was new and he grafted it and then put it onto the car because the like where the tail lights are and everything, all of that is custom. Like none of that is is stock. In mm -hmm. fact, the, the taillight bowls, the, the bezels around the taillight bowls are, are literally dog bowls. They are from <laughs> Target. They are dog bowls. Sometimes, sometimes the most basic shit. Wow. Creative. But is there a picture? I think you, I think you may have, oh, there. Oh, oh, okay. From the rear, <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it does look a little mishmashy when you go from the rear. From the 90 degree side profile, it yeah. looks fantastic. I don't know when it's painted. It might it's work. It's cool though. I yeah. I think it's really <laughs> it's really cool. So he started with the exterior. It looks like judging by the interior. What photos, what was the it, motivation for this? He just thought that he would do a little best of. This is what I love about this because even if you even if you don't like the way the car looks, you got to hear this this guy's story. He was a little kid when the uh, you know when the third generation came out. So sixty eight. And uh, he was really excited when he, he saw one in the dealership. He was already a car, car guy. He saw the car, saw the front of it, thought it looked amazing. Went around to the back and was just crushed. Was like, this is not what a Corvette should look like. He's used to the big bubble window on the earlier ones. And, he, and so he said his whole life, he has imagined a, a Corvette of this generation with a split window back. That's awesome. And I mean, he did good it. Good for him. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And he made it himself. <laughs> No, he worked with a guy, um, customizers always have nicknames. He worked with a guy named Radio Bob. I'm sorry, the dog's barking. <laughs> Radio Bob? Do yeah. you think Radio Bob knows Video Bob? <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Do you know about Video Bob? Video I don't know Bob, Video Bob. Video Bob is, <laughs> Google Video Bob. He looks exactly what you think someone named Video Bob looks like. And he is uh, like one of the foremost um, like DeLorean uh, back to the future uh, recreator guys. He made one of the original, like, uh, like really, really movie accurate DeLorean guy. Yeah. Is that video, Bob? Yeah. I, yeah. That is well, nice. I like that you're backing up my, you know, my yeah, fact so wait, here that so they Radio always have Bob. nicknames. They yeah, always what's have Radio nicknames. Radio Bob about? Uh, Radio Bob, uh, customizer. He used to work with the painter, Bill Carter. He's done a bunch of stuff. He did a, um, a wagon that I think won some awards recently. Um, and uh, he's been around for a long time. And, you know, like all customizers, wild, wild man. <laughs> yes. I bet, <laughs> I bet he earned that nickname because of like, I don't know, the cops being called on him, like <laughs> being on the police radio, like that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. He, just, he just fixed stuff. I feel like you live in this like awesome, friendly, <laughs> alternate universe, uh, Alana, where Back, like, people used to fix things, and they all had nicknames. And it's like, hey, sport, hey, Joe. It's like, well, his name, real name's Gary, but we call him Joe because of this story with a coffee truck. <laughs> and, like, all, you all drive Trans Ams, and you just fix stuff. Like, you're fucking plumber. It's the most perfect plumber <laughs> for what I know about, like, you and the collection of cars you have. Of course the guy shows up or has this, like, mishmash Corvette. Yeah. Because he is – tinkering to a, a level that like only you and your husband would appreciate it's not just, just an old corvette like the weirdest corvette with the weirdest <laughs> it's so story cool. yeah um that is a perfect yeah, person you know, to be working on your house living the dream <laughs> living the dream and now both our bathroom sinks work so all right <laughs> it's like yeah. the one thing you couldn't you guys can't fix 
<laughs> Did you, you guys crawl buy a... under the house? Oh, oh yeah. Oh really? That's not good. I'm sh- I'm shocked. You don't. No offense. Take pride in your plumbing. It seems like the kind of thing you'd be <laughs> like. Yes, I made that poo go away. Well, for so for the for the people like, what is what's in your garage driveway right now? Like it's always pretty obscure and cool. Okay, what's... Do you need to go outside and look? We'll wait. No, I'm, I'm just kind of picturing it because we, uh, we moved stuff around, so it's like, well, what is where? Um, so the 81 Trans Am, which I think I had just got the last time that I was on the show or maybe hadn't got yet. I don't know. Um, so 81 Turbo Trans Am, um, Opal, The engine Polara. in that car is extraordinary. Extraordinarily bad. Yeah, I know, but just to look at it, you go, how did someone build this and go, yep, done <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that those guys are probably still around and i need to i need to do some interviewing right i'm pretty sure you start with gail banks <laughs> oh yeah right wasn't he had to have been involved no one built an american turbo car in the 70s without calling gail banks actually if they called gail it would have worked better. that may be true yeah i feel like it would have had an interview oh yeah he was working for like volvo or something at the time he was making like turbo volvos in the 70s yeah and like the military yeah yeah um, and like drag yeah. boats for okay. New so the Opal, the Turbo yeah. Trans Am, the Polara. Um, I've got the cover off the '70 Challenger because I keep I keep meaning to do a video about it and then forgetting. So it's like I'll take the cover off and then it'll be uncovered for two weeks, just long enough to get a little more sun damage, and then I'll put the cover oh. back on. Um, and then what else is around? Tom's Cummins Turbo Diesel, and then you know we've got eight million trucks. We've we've been working on our second ramp truck, and so that's been out. Um, ramp trucks are awesome yeah they're so good i can't yeah. wait until we can actually register things again and then we can <laughs> drive it somewhere <laughs> oh dmv is closed yeah oh i've seen how many people have you seen around i mean maybe some, some more in venice a lot of um let's just say utility vans <laughs> that have questionable provenance i've seen just writ pieces of paper on the back that just says DMV closed <laughs> COVID. I'm like, oh shit. I, I drove by the DMV today and there was a line out the door. Like, it's open again. Yeah, it's not closed. The yeah. DMV's not Those closed. My physical just, therapist is across the street. Like, we're getting it, away it's with been shit. open for at least three weeks. Like, oh no. I don't yeah. want to go to the DMV. <laughs> no, you definitely don't want to go to the DMV. Is AAA open? That's the secret in California. Yeah. The AAA in California, when I moved out here and they're like, just go to AAA, I was like, what do you mean? My car is not broken. You're like, no, AAA in California is different. I was like, what do you mean? And then I entered this magical land of make believe where you can do DMV things without going anywhere near the fucking DMV. And there's like and four like, people nice in to it. You. Yeah. Nice to you. I get in and out of that place in eight minutes. It's gr- <laughs> the best. They'd be like, what's a ramp truck? And then they would try to sell you. They try to sell you a trip on a cruise, you know, with your ramp truck. Yeah. Um, we have a we have a couple of different mini bikes like a Honda 50 and um, like a Posty Trail 90 and stuff. And Tom once went to get the the mini bike stickered so that we could go take them you know take them out to the desert. And uh, this was actually at DMV. And the lady gave him street plates for the 50. And then she was really mad when he like by pointed, accident. Yeah. <laughs> she and then she was really mad when he pointed out that like. That wasn't what he was there for, for the street plates. But like, can you imagine just like tooling around on a, on a 50, like on a monkey bike with, uh, with full on plates? You know what I've seen recently? It's been quite popular down here in Venice is people have been riding around on whatever the bike is from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Oh yeah, the little, it's made of like ladder bar. It's got tiny little. It's like the worst motorcycle you can imagine. It's like a knockoff ruckus. The kind of worst, like the worst yeah. ruckus you could imagine. I the saw wheels like night, half the his size license plate was in front or behind his brake light. <laughs> I swear to God, I couldn't see him until I got up in my headlights and I was like, this is, how is this legal? People have been riding those things around and they're like pull start. They're like, you know, Briggs and Stratton, <laughs> like lawnmower <laughs> engines. It's ridiculous. Do, do you guys remember the, the pocket bike trend? Oh, yeah. Like where are all of those now? They're worth a uh, million dollars. <laughs> I saw one. I saw one in Santa Monica. This guy was riding it to the beach, like the tiny little race replica pocket. He's riding it like, on the street. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, and I'm like, how do you just hope you don't see a cop, or do police not care? Because it's not street legal in the slightest. And this guy was like going on an errand. Or- did you ever ride one of those things? Yeah. You did? I think I fell off of one pretty quickly. Um, They're so sketchy. I rode one like 50 feet and fell over and lost like a foot of skin. <laughs> yeah, they're not stable till 20 miles an hour. 
but you don't start at 20 miles an hour. You start at zero. It's and it's so like, sketchy. Yeah, really not good. Yeah. I th- you know what happened to them? I think, I think the Grom killed that entire thing. I think everyone was like, oh, here's like almost that thing, but like way more safe and made by Honda. Like this. And, yeah, and legal. <laughs> yeah. Get a plate on it. It's like three grand. Like awesome. Sign me up for that. The new Honda like monkey, like the new monkey that's like a Grom but looks like a monkey looks amazing fuck me is that your ramp truck is this white quad cab thing the ramp truck you just bought yeah holy shit that's enormous (laughs) (laughs) that's hilarious look at that thing what year is that oh 71 does it work yeah it does now uh so we we pulled it out because um i don't know what picture you're looking at but we pulled it out because we wanted to put the a the very race car artsy on it. one. Um, Front three quarter. Very, very artsy. So, yeah, so you can see the cars on the back. So, I, yeah. that's, that's a dart light. And we're like, oh, well, we might as well get another parking spot in our yard by putting the car on the ramp truck, which is what a ramp truck is for. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we pulled it out to do that. And then when we did that, Tom's like, oh, the brakes aren't great. So, I'm just going to see what's wrong with the brakes. And so, he ended up redoing brakes all four corners. Um, he did a bunch of other repairs. He like fixed the hood, all this stuff. And while while he was working on it, and it wasn't cheap either. The brakes on those things aren't cheap. They're weird. Um, while he's working on it, I'm like, are we going to take it somewhere? Are we going to do anything? He's like, no, it's just, it's bothering me that it's sitting here and I know that it doesn't work right. I'm like, because, you know, we have like three different cars in the front driveway that are <laughs> leaking right now. So maybe we could fix those, which we are driving. And he's like, no, I've already... No, like I don't oh care about God. those. It's like it's got to be the truck. Is that does, and what engine is it? It's a big diesel. Um, I think it's a four thirteen um gas gas engine. Oh wow! What a weird. I what love can, that weird ass cube. I mean, other than like, like, you know, haul cars around. Because there's something cool you could do with it. Because it's like a quad cab in the front. I mean, like, you I, could live in it. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't recommend that. Dude, this is like an open air. It's got a bunch of like lockers and stuff on yeah. the side of it too. Like it's a it's a proper race hauler. It, it yeah. belonged to uh, belonged to a guy named Bobby Yule in the seventies. He was a pro stock racer. Uh, he was like a kid whose dad wanted him to be like the next Ronnie Sox, so they bought him a, a ex Sox and Martin Duster and a ramp truck, and it was like all painted up and uh, and he raced it. You can you can find pictures of it all painted up if you look up Bobby Yule. Stuff. Have you so have you actually driven the truck yet? I haven't driven that truck. Um, I've ridden in it. They take we've t- so it's that huge. was one that Tom got. There was this period of time where every time that I went out of town on a trip, Tom bought another giant truck. We have yes. <laughs> four, we have four giant trucks, and um, and so he would like. I remember I was at SEMA like two years ago, maybe, and he, he sent me a picture, and he was. Like I bought it and it was my fault because I sent him the Craigslist ad for it. And oh, he's like, yeah, so I, you're, I bought you're it. You're an enabler. Uh, no, it's a, yeah. no we're, we're in this together. But so he, he's like, I bought this. And then he sent me a video, a very wobbly video of him driving the truck with like 10 drunk neighbors, like on the back ramps, like just riding around the neighborhood in circles, like that drinking beer right. and laughing. So I think that's what you do with it. It's like a parade I think you vehicle. could pretty much put an above ground pool <laughs> kind of on it. Oh, man. That's <laughs> would be pretty wow, fun. dude. Go to yeah, par- I mean, it's a parade float, basically. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, much it's a parade. It's a weird, weird, weird dream cruise. And it's, a, it's an interesting ramp truck because it's not, it's not slanted down in the back. And it doesn't look like it has hydraulics to angle. So it looks like you put ramps on it, drive the car right. up onto a – it's flat on the, on the bed. Yeah, it's like a low um, boy flatbed, really. There's ramps. Yeah. There's like separate ramps – in the center of the bed that you pull out by hand and attach to the uh, yeah right. to the yeah yeah god if you for, m- imagine forgetting those at home that thing has to be shady as fuck to drive dude it's gotta what? be so sketchy to drive that thing no it's so stable it's huge it's gotta be it's wandery <laughs> no i bet that thing must track straight as a battleship right it's just heavy and the wheelbase is what 80 feet well i mean i think it's pretty speed limited so it's you know yeah it, maybe going downhill would be well, rough. The, yeah, the pull of gravity will keep it from going too fast. But I bet, I bet it just motors forward. It's like a bus. It's huge. It's a bus dude. El Camino. It's what is it? Is it literally like forty feet long? Um, it's probably high say, high thirties. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't measured it, I love and it. I don't know. 
So what are the other, you have the yellow huge truck, this white huge truck, and then what mm -hmm. are the other two huge trucks? Um, the, the blue huge truck, the original huge truck, the, the oh, Dick Landy, yeah. which is like still, still in works. And then um, the, the fourth one isn't as huge. Well, if, I mean, we have two yellow trucks because we have the dump truck. You're talking about the 80s truck, right? Oh, and I'm talking about the awesome 80s yeah. truck. Yeah, yeah. No, we also have a dump truck, which is really huge. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have five huge trucks. What are you doing with a dump truck? It's Tom again. I'm telling you, every time I leave town, he buys a giant truck. But, but what that is one, he doing with it? He bought it because he needed a part off of it for the first truck. But then once he bought it and drove it here from Pomona, he liked it so much that he didn't want to take it apart. Thought. So now it just lives here. It's like, is he, does he do, he doesn't do anything with it. Like he doesn't like, like, like load things and like haul things. And Sometimes we things. start it up to entertain children who are visiting. I mean, that's pretty much all I could think of. I remember when you bought this, I think it was, it was right before you came on the show last time. And you were like, well, here's the newest weirdest thing we bought. And, and, you, <laughs> and you didn't know what you were going to do with it. And I can't imagine that's like one of the larger vehicles you could purchase and not have like a purpose for. Yeah. That's you a specialized what? tool that right. takes up so and much you space. Could build, you could like a skate <laughs> ramp in the back. I don't know. You could, but yet you can't do much. Now there's your above ground pool. Just yeah, it. exactly. Oh, that yeah. could be the pool. And, and mm, funny thing about the dump truck cool. is we've had we've had three different people offer to buy it because they actually need a dump truck. And Tom's like, no, I like the dump truck. And you're like, no, I, I just want to look at it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, <I haven't... laughs> hey, man. Well, how about this? I really Why don't you fucking rent the, the dump truck? <laughs> You have decorative parachutes at home? <laughs> like, I own a dump truck and can drive it. You need one, but I bet you don't actually want to own this fucker, do you? That is so funny. Call me. Got you. They need it. You're like, yeah, no, we just like And Tom could get a t-shirt that says Mr. Dump. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh my God. Okay, maybe we'll pass on that. It's so funny. <laughs> Um, so, all right. Well, Matt, I'll put you in touch with Tom. You can talk to him about renting. You can you can tell him how you've got this whole thing going with the Lamborghini rentals and stuff. And maybe you can convince him that dump truck rentals will be equally uh, financially. Clever. I mean, if people you're the one who said people were calling you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, people call me about taking pictures of my red car and I am happy to oblige for the right price, which they usually balk at. <laughs> <laughs> What are you personally wrenching on right now? Because you have rebuilt engines, cars, all kinds of stuff, which is awesome. But like half your Instagram is you with a pry bar or a, a breaker bar or like a torque wrench. And I'm just posing. I don't no, really, I know. Yeah. I mean, I know you're not. I know you're you're not. Just, uh, are you just TBTing to something? Yeah, yeah. TBTing just, just, to when I had a torque wrench. <laughs> No, see, the nice thing about my life is that it's basically unchanged by coronavirus. So I stayed home and wrenched on things before and occasionally drove new cars and wrote about them. And that is still what I'm doing. Uh, still finishing up on the Trans Am. So we'd had it, we had it done. We were driving it. Um, you know, Matt got to see it. And then uh, on the way back, I was like, all right, the transmission's really bad. So we bought a new transmission, took the transmission out, and then realized that the flex plate was cracked. Uh, so oh there you there's a photo of that yeah. yeah so um so then we ordered a new flex plate and uh and then we just stalled out and got distracted Holy. with something else so that's that's my current wrenching project and i should really 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 work on the opal because it's got leaks from both ends and i think the muffler is gonna fall off oh mm. man i, I love that about my wife yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> um, leaks from both ends and the muffler is going to fall okay. off. That's a, uh, do you have a big whiteboard or do you just note puddles? And that really, did, that really tells, it tells um, you how to do it. Well, we do have a whiteboard, which um, we mostly just use to write, you know, good natured insults to each other on. Um, and with the puddles, it's all Tom's, like Tom's truck leaks, the Cummins Turbo Diesel leaks. So all the puddles are truck related. And I just sort of have to guess if maybe my car is also leaking. <laughs> it's uh, the Opal is so cool. I love the Opal. I, I, I do Opal is like a, two, it's like a two third scale Corvette. Yeah. Yeah. I love it's, it. It looks so good with the 71. I feel like maybe I should put a split window in it. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Polara is that running That guy's got great. an extra. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, no, that guy, he's got extra. Uh, he's got a 71. So I could put, yeah. <laughs> um, 
the, the Polara is running great. That was my last, like, that is a project that I completed. So um, just in case somebody right now is about to type what a loser I am for not having any running cars, um, did, did brakes, did a brake booster on the Polara, did the gauges. It's great. It's never run this good. Um, everything's perfect. So what color is your Polara? You have a lot green, of colors. Green, 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 green. I think there's a picture of me under the dash with the dog not helping. That's like as close to a daily as you've got, isn't it? You have, do you have no, any modern cars? You do mm -hmm. not, right? No. Good for you. I don't have time for that <laughs> shit. Cheers. Cheers to old, there it was. Really Cheers impressive. to only old cars. Um, I'm staying in that 91 period. Did I, did I ever, I don't know if I ever talked about the Bolt. Did I talk about the Bolt on the van? Are you all here? Yeah. On the podcast, you, I did. You can tell her that. Oh, yeah. I want to hear it. Yeah, well, so, heard. you know, we bought the Delica, the van, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's great. But it was like, just a, like, you know, it's a 25-year-old, uh, almost 30-year-old diesel. And so it was, to me, an appropriate level of shaky. <laughs> you know what I mean? I figured, like, this is just kind of shaky. And when, you know, it was shaky at idle. And then when you uh, would add anything above idle, it would smooth right out. And then it was fine, right? So, I, you know. I, oh, I talked about it in the context of the heat shields, right? Oh, right, yeah. And, and uh, I was saying on a, a previous show that you should never ever – I incorrectly made the assumption twice in the last two years that a rattle under the car was just a heat shield or something. Neither one was a heat shield. On the Delica, it was a bolt that holds on the alternator that was like – had backed itself out. It was like almost coming out. The alternator almost fell off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. But, it, um, but it fit, we fixed it. And it's way, it was not supposed to be that vibrating. It was actually supposed to be quite smooth. <laughs> <laughs> As yeah, I, I, um, I do, I, I mean, two things. One, I, I get what you're saying with thinking like, oh, this is, this is an old car. I should just forgive it these things. But then you realize actually no, most of them weren't that bad. And if they are that bad, something's wrong. But also the just a heat shield, um, my old Challenger, I remember I was coming back from LACR, I'd gone racing with it and it was making a rattle. And I was like, I think it's just a, a baffle in the, in the valve cover. Cause it, it did kind of the, the baffle and the valve train, they were close together. Well, it was just a baffle in the valve cover, only it was a baffle that had completely come loose and was being chewed up <laughs> by the rocker arms and going through the rest of the engine. So, oh, no. so I was right, but in a very wrong way. <laughs> yeah, the just don't the just the heat shield, just a nah. It's it's probably not that. And you're right. And and I, when I talked to Spike Ferriston and Paul Zuckerman, and because they buy, you know, they, these guys are these guys are they're they're they're, they're doing doing pretty well, and the cars that they buy are. You know, they'll buy an, an 83 911 SC that's got 11,000 miles on it or 7,000 miles on it or something like that. And I, you know, and, and I go, how do you, you know, I go, do you, do you have to then worry about the miles? And they go, no, we've spent more. Those, the, the miles are for us now to put on, you know. <laughs> but, he, but the difference between low mile and ultra low mile in an old car in terms of how they feel, even versus restored, you know, restored can feel very good, but it doesn't necessarily feel exactly like it felt from the factory because oftentimes restored can be better than new mm -hmm. um, in some ways. You know what I mean? Even if the parts are the same, it was might have been put together by someone that gave a different amount of fucks. Right. Than, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, he, when you drive these old cars that, that have very, very low miles on them, you go, oh, my God, this is what it felt like. You know, the guy who, who spent $60,000 in 1983 on this 911, like, this is what this guy felt. You know, it's a different kind of thing. It's very interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, and it is interesting to think about that, especially in the context of older cars, because, yeah, I mean, it's like you get in an old Lamborghini or something now and you're like oh it smells like gas and this and that and you know maybe some of them did but like those they, probably I think those <laughs> did what they were new. but like the 911s didn't you know they yeah, were yeah. you know they were tight and uh and it's sort of similar these days you know everything's better but I recently had like a back-to-back -back where I had a 911 and then um I mean, I don't, you know, just something normal I don't even want to say what it was because I'm not dissing on it it was just like a normal economy car and while I had the 911, I was just like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, I like it. 
But then when I got out of the 911, literally as I got out of the 911 and got into the other car, opened the door and shut it, I was like, oh. Oh. This <laughs> that's is what that you're paying for in a Porsche. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely true. And I drove, um, I put a couple of miles on, um, I have Alex Roy's uh, 87. He's got an 87 Carrera Targa. That's the same year as mine, but it's completely stock. Well-maintained, similar miles to mine. Very nice car, but, but completely stock. And I drove his car. Oh, my God. It's like a LS 400. It's, like, it's so luxurious. My car has been turned into a hot rod. And this thing is so light and easy, and everything is very smooth. And it's just like it was so mellow. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is how – this is how Porsche sent this thing out like this. Yeah. Like, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. You got to forget how many this, things you changed on your car. Changed a lot. Right. Yeah. We well, I mean, just the lot. tires alone on your car make for a radically different driving experience than Porsche intended. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, ha I do have to say that I think, I, I don't think that the extra horsepower that Marco put in my engine offsets the difference in rolling, <laughs> uh, <laughs> rolling resistance of tire uh that oh there it is that's that's alex's car uh that being said uh i i i wouldn't tr i'm not saying i would prefer to trade mine for his but i just think to, to to go back and drive a stock one and go oh man this is so easy like this is just like the, so chill like it was great well people that turn datsun 510s or 2002s into tra track cars and race cars like the one that sam mm -hmm. sam smith races that feels very different from a you know bone stock 1970s 2002 that's going to like lean over when you corner and you're going to move in the seat because they didn't know what bolstering really was yeah like it's a totally different driving experience you know, the steering wheel is going to be super thin yeah for and really big instead of this little motorsport thing like every sensation is completely different other other than maybe the, maybe the sound the door makes when it closes maybe um I just occurred to me that the post you pulled oh. up is that Alex was attempting to sell his two Porsche ago, right? yeah. from two years ago. I guess it didn't work out. Because it didn't sell. Because I still got it. I mean, I guess it, it worked out maybe because he's able to keep it. Maybe, yeah. I don't think, I'm sure he didn't want to sell it. Um, it is a, uh, it is really nice to go back and drive a car that is that kind of uh, stock. It is nice. They did some of these things like, oh yeah, it's kind of like good actually. It's right? like muscle cars. Like I like the pro touring thing because it's nice when they turn and stop. Yeah. And I like being able to feel, you know, the, when it's a little bit of like dr modified a little bit for a drag strip, it feels tougher. But when they're stock, there's like a softness to them. And it just feels, I don't know, less threatening, even though it's super dangerous anyway, because it doesn't stop or anything. But <laughs> yeah, there's like, I don't more know. So. Yeah. Well, I think what happens when you get in a stock car is that um, you tend to drive it about to where it was designed to be driven because especially especially, especially with like a, a muscle car because if you because of the role you you just don't push it the way that you start to push it once it's been modified like if you put more horsepower in it it gets it goes faster sooner and you know it, i mean it's all about balancing stuff out you know it's it's a weird thing. I, I just drove. Do you guys remember the Edelbrock Celica that was at SEMA last year? In the yeah, Edelbrock they off, they offered to let me have a go, and then they they emailed me back later, and they go, "Hey, how tall are you?" Yeah, you would not <laughs> fit in it. You wouldn't fit in it. I fit in it, Zach. I think you'd be able to fit in it. Oh um, well, you yeah, since since I don't get, I didn't get Ooh. to drive it because they were like, "Yeah, oh, you're over like five nine. <laughs> Forget about it." I was like, five nine. So yeah, yeah. How is it? <laughs> oh, it's great. It was really really fun, but it was also like. It was so much work. Like I hadn't been, because I haven't been driving the Challenger that much and because I've been doing a lot of new car review stuff, I've just been in pretty easygoing stuff like cars recently. Yeah. And so it was, it was both super, super fun um, to be in something that was similar to what I used to drive all the time when I was at Hot Rod in that it was work every second. There's no relaxing, you know? I mean, it's like, it's got the kind of clutch where if you don't think about the muscles in your leg, keeping the clutch, clutch pushed in, then the clutch will be out, you know? Oh, and, yeah. um, and it's got like, what's the motor in this thing? It's an LS. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of that thing that one, that guy built with the, with the supercharged uh, oh, right. one UZ yeah, or whatever one Z, it was. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool looking. It's got like a real period race car vibe with some sort of fender flares and it's great pale. Is it pale yellow? Yeah. Yellow yeah. yeah. And cool. it's like original paint 
patina on it and then they put the graphics on and here's a fun fact about those graphics because i was like wow that's a commitment man like to have a big giant edelbrock on yeah. your car for the rest of your life and he's like oh it's it's actually oil paint um and we can we can remove it oil paint wow yeah it's no like way. a so it's it's like a temporary so if you sprayed it with a um you know like Car cleaner Acetone or something. Or whatever. Yeah, it would just wipe right off. Well, that's interesting. That's really cool. Wow. I thought that was really smart. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's cool, but you got to be pretty brave to spray your car with a car cleaner too. <laughs> that's well, no, I mean, that's no know, less nerve wracking. If you got clear coat and stuff on it, it you know, it's not yeah. going to take that off. I guess. But, um, and the and the paints on top of that. I just thought I thought it was an interesting thing to do because the if it was all stickers it just wouldn't have the same look and right. if it was permanent well you know i mean then totally that's well that's permanent. very interesting i i oil paint i've yeah, never awesome. heard of that before that's so cool yeah how did so other than being a lot of work mm -hmm. uh what was it like to drive um it was really fun like really the only part that was a lot of work was was like getting it going from from stoplights um which in unfortunately in torrance around edelbrock there are a lot of stop stoplights so like first gear was a lot of work and reverse was a lot of work because it has like a reverse lockout which is just like a little uh, wire pull so you pull that oh, with one yeah, hand yeah, and yeah. then you have to like put it into reverse with the other so all of that was difficult but once you're moving it's really really fun like it's not that loud um and it and it wasn't hot at all, and it like it wasn't. I mean, it, I, I guess it was pretty vibrating, but not not in an unpleasant way. Um, I had a really good time in it. I fit in it really well. It, you know, it was like the hardest thing really was just getting used to looking onto the fender for the the, uh, the side mirrors. mirror because oh, I've never driven a car up. with that. Um, Everyone says it's terrible. Yeah, it seems everyone like says idea. it's the worst. It's like a vision test. Yeah. It's like the mirror was here. Now it's five feet yeah. away. Yeah. You know, what uh, letter do you see, sir? I, for me, it wasn't even that it, I couldn't see it. It was that my brain is so programmed to look right here that I would look right there at the at the A pillar, yeah. even though there's nothing there. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but I thought about the exact picture that they pulled up. Zach has these has these uh, this it's like the, the, on, the, on the Celica. It's this, this black bullet shaped beautiful it's a beautiful thing and the fender mirrors look so cool and i went back and forth on that black fox body i had because i was like oh man this would piss so many people off if i went <laughs> to the fender mirrors and the stock mirrors on fox bodies are unusable garbage anyway so you might as well get rid of them the only real workable solution by the way is a full aftermarket regular mirror or one of them things that come goes across the top <laughs> Those are great they are great the full mirrors yeah, yeah they're sick but I, about uh sean morris was like nope don't don't do it you'll never see at anyone you have the biggest blinds yeah spots. you can't they're, they're, they're not functional worse. and you got to drill a hole in your fender there's like modern cars in japan that they put those things on you ever see them no, but it, you go it to looks Tokyo. Cool. It's like a Lexus RX three hundred. They, they must put have shits on it. <laughs> it's like, so funny. I don't know. Someone smart will comment like, "Why did Japan put them there instead of on the A pillar?" Like, well, it probably did, in theory eliminates your blind spot. Oh, because if you move it forwards, you can now you're now seeing the car that's right next to you versus missing it. I, oh, I, I think. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Or, okay. I don't that know. Makes sense. Or it just looks awesome. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, Could just look awesome. You know, half the cars I have are so cammed up that the mirrors vibrate all the time anyway, so you can't really see what's in them. That's so. fucking rad. Oh, <laughs> just like whatever. Me. You drove the Shelby, right? The new one. Yeah. Yeah. You just drove it, right? Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? It's pretty amazing. Uh, it's pretty stunning. <laughs> but the first time I got on the entrance ramp and gave it the full, the full f f floorboard pull. Because you said the vibrating, vibrating yeah. mirrors, the mirror vibrated like a NASCAR. Like you know <laughs> that shot in Days of Thunder where they're showing the rear view and it's fucking shaking like crazy. That's this thing at full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a Mustang. <laughs> what a rad car. Better the mirror than the hood. Oh, For God. so long, the hood would vibrate yeah. <laughs> on the Mustangs. They've, dude. But how much fun did you have in that thing? Um, I, yeah, that, I mean, I'm mad at that car because when Edmonds did, when we did the muscle car shootout, I was in the challenger. So I lost in the drag race to the Mustang and I like tried really hard to not lose. Like it was definitely not, um, there was nothing I could do and I was infuriated. So I'm like kind of a little mad at the Mustang just 
Like, I don't care that it beat the challenger, but I'm mad that it beat me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Understandable. Yeah. But did you get to drive it though? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And it's, I mean, it's kind of just ridiculous. It's like, it shouldn't be able to do as many things as it, as it does as well as it does them. Um, I guess you pay for it in fuel economy. Yeah. I almost ran out of gas. I came really close, really, really close to running out of gas. Well, cause you're um, looking at like the predictive fuel meter and you're like, it doesn't really mean seven, does it? Seven? Yeah, I mean seven. The, I understand it when you're like mobbing, like it takes a lot of fuel to make 750 horsepower. Like it just does. I get it. But when I was just driving to the grocery store and getting like eight, I was like, fucking really? <laughs> like you guys are, but, but even compared to a Hellcat, Hellcats are great. I love Hellcats. They're great fun. But they're very kind of glub, 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 glub. And, and this, um, it's very smooth. It's less, it, it sounds great, but it's less kind of cammy, lopy, vibrate And so it's easier to spend more time in, I think. Yeah. It feels more modern. Less muscle I, car. It does feel more modern. I, I personally think the Challenger is more comfortable um, as far as spending more time in the... Uh, you know, and and Ford still, I still feel like Ford isn't, I mean, none of them are really going, you know, full lux with the interiors the way that they are on the trucks. But I feel like the Ford interior is still a little bit like, wow, this is a really expensive car to have. This, yeah. Like, no, the interior's lame. little thing in it. <laughs> the interior's not great, but the Recaro seats were really good. Yeah, the steering the wheel good. was really good. The driving position was really nice. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, no, I agree with you, though. The rest of the interior is whatever. It's I mean, none long. of them are great. Like, I love the Hellcat a lot, and I, and I agree. I think sitting in it is more comfortable. It's got them big, um, lazy boys. Yeah, Hellcat, totally. Hellcat's it's like a couch. Got, it's Hellcat's like a couch, got lazy It's like boys. a supportive couch. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what yeah. size you are, but the whole right side of that dash, and it is <laughs> There's a lot a of football it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you can play mini golf on that dash. It's just one big piece yeah. of, like, rubberized plastic. So they have their cheap things, too. Yeah. I, think the, yeah. I think the menus look pretty, a little bit better and more expensive. But that um, dual clutch was a game changer for me. Yeah. It was like, oh shit, this is what we're working with now. This is this is a new thing we're doing. It was very impressive stuff. But I yeah, but no, I like I can't um, I can't disagree with you on that. It is a very impressive car. Um, I don't know this, but somebody I was talking to had a theory that the reason the fuel mileage is so bad is that they might be using fuel for cooling. But because. It is, no. it is a supercharger that is as big as the Hellcat supercharger on a much smaller engine. And you know they took out the entire front of that car in order to get air into it. Like that's- Yeah. Wow. No, they, yeah, they opened the whole thing up wow. for that. Re yeah, and it's, it's, it revs higher too. They, yeah. they really crank the, th what's the red line of a Hellcat? 68 maybe? It's a little lower. Yeah, I mean, it's, they they just raised it, I think, for the super stock. Oh yeah, it's like seven grand. I think seven, uh, yeah, this 71. thing goes to seventy five, so they're they're spinning that that blower up pretty good. But I wouldn't be surprised on the cooling. Uh, the Evos, Evo tens, Evo nines and tens, and um, Nissan GTRs or R thirty fives, they use fuel for cooling, and so I uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that too. But it's it is fucking terrible fuel economy <laughs> and the mustang has a small tank mustangs only got like i don't even think it's 15 it's not can you get look up the fuel capacity of a mustang i don't i think it's sub 15 it's like not you know normally it's like you talk about okay a jeep a track hawk well it's got like a 22 gallon tank so at least you've got some range out of it right what do you have a, do you have a uh uh, ooh, 16. Yeah, yeah six, 16. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, puppies. Puppies uh, are okay. The red line on the Hellcat is 6,500. I was wrong, so I don't think you know. Red line on the Hellcat is 6,500. 6, uh, um, 16, 15, 16 gallons. 16 you know, gallon. Is the, I'm sure is we've it. all been wrong many times on this show already, Zach. Right, but if I can catch it in 10 seconds. Oh, then it doesn't count. It's like, a, it's like the like yeah. dropping food on the floor. Right, yeah. five, five second rule. Dude, no I batteries. listened to an episode of, uh, of Rogan, and I love Joe, and I think he's hilarious, but I listened to an episode of him with a comedian named Kyle Dunnigan, mm -hmm. who I think is a funny guy 
But they openly admitted they had no idea what they were talking about like seven times in the first 30 minutes and then proceeded to hypothesize wildly incorrectly about a variety of topics. Yeah, and that can be funny. <laughs> which, I, which can be funny until they started talking about autonomous cars and worshipping their Teslas. And then Kyle admitted to falling asleep on a road trip on the freeway to, to having a little snooze. And I was like, hmm. So you, you want to be not mildly, cool, Kyle. Not you want to cool. be mildly factual if you can. If you can, I think I think you could have a great challenge. I don't know. You have to close forty miles of highway or more, but put people in the driver's seat of one of those cars mm -hmm. after a long work day, and be like, try to stay awake without caffeine because you because you want you can't you you're not, you're not supposed to text or anything. So you take all the stimulation away from your brain other than just paying attention, especially if it's an open road. And now you don't have to think about what you're doing with your hands, paying attention, anything. Your brain is going to go into screensaver mode. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, think it's oh. a di I think it's a difficult thing for humans to do. It doesn't excuse it, but it's like, that's a problem that they're going to have by introducing this technology. That commute home at the end of, a long, of an eight hour office day is really, really gnarly. Mm -hmm. it's just, that's a tough thing for the brain to process the, the sort of stop and go traffic and then, you know, 50 and then stop and go traffic and then 60. And like, I, I, I yeah. Like, like I fall asleep every time I get on a plane as it taxis to take off. For every sure. Time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. First 20, 20 minutes. Time. First 20 minutes. Done so. so that's, that's basically what going home at the end of a long day in Tesla with autopilot would be like. Yeah. I mean, but, my, my biggest complaint about autonomous cars is related to that, which is that I like driving because it gives my brain something to do like my brain and my body both something to do and every time that i have done any sort of long autonomous drive testing um i did a cadillac thing earlier this year um i am then alone with my brain which is not occupied doing other things so instead it just goes like "Ooh, let's go over every dumb fuck up you've made since you were six and like it man it'll Little just lay him Billy out there steven still yeah. fucking hates you by yeah. the way <laughs> yeah it's bad it's bad so i like to stay busy I remember when you peed yourself in fourth grade and everyone else does too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's like a weird recovery program. I mean, it's weird that you do remember that because we, we didn't know each other then. But I mean, oh. I, guess, I guess the news travels. Yeah, your school told me. I mean, everyone. listen, we were only three <laughs> states away from each other. Everybody knew. That is how it would feel as a kid. Like what was knows. that movie where the joke was like, everybody knew we were only six towns away? <laughs> like, I forgot. I don't remember. The Scotty doesn't know, I think. But, but it's like, yeah, you know, Jingle Bells Batman smells. That went across the country before the internet, travel the world. That was some Johnny Appleseed weird, you know, nursery <laughs> rhyme shit. Um, speaking of traveling, are you going to be doing any traveling? Or are you going to just hunker it down in your shop, I, in your broken car? Man, it goes back and forth. Like, I was starting to feel like, okay, I, maybe I'll go do something. I, you know, I, I got a press pass for Bonneville for next, next month. I was like, well, you know, it's outside and I hate missing Bonneville. I'd like to go see a speed week. But then now I'm looking at stuff again, going like, do I want to be in Wendover in a casino in Wendover? Like, I don't no, know. If, if you have to stay in the casino in Wendover, I would say maybe not. But if you have alternative arrangements, I would say the salt flats themselves are probably fairly low risk. Yeah, well, yeah. and then that's sort of like what all of the different options seem to be ending up with. I'm not worried about going to a race or going to shoot a video and drive cars, but it's all the other stuff around it. Like, how yeah. do I get there and how, where do I stay once I am there? I mean, I guess maybe I just need to get a motorhome. I mean, maybe the white truck. Maybe you need to turn the white truck into some sort of Oregon Trail. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking totally. covered wagon situation. Yeah. And this is cheap. Do that. That'd be rad. Yeah. I mean, I could just strap a porta potty to the back and, uh, you know, get one of those sun showers. Get like a Ram Pro Charger <laughs> van and then just. Someone, yeah. I mean, wouldn't someone hook you up? Can't you get one of those like Airstream sprinters, some cool shit like that? I'm sure you can, you can make, make a call. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I I probably could. I, I always try to avoid borrowing anything for Bonneville because the salt flats just destroy stuff. Uh, oh, that's yeah. so kind of you. That's true. How nice. <laughs> you look at you taking care of press cars. Oh, go on the salt. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> they just eat it. You have to make sure it's like this. You promise you're never going to sell this car, and they're like, "We promise." Like, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know where I'm going. <laughs> No, I feel you. I feel you. We're taking this road trip in like 10 days, and I'm a little nervous about it, but I think it'll be okay. Yeah, they, where, are you, where are you guys going? Pacific Northwest, 
It's called Jealous. Adventure Drives. It's Rob Ferretti's deal, but they just sent out the email. It's like the uh, the coronavirus things. The only thing we were really working, I mean, like, it's like most of it's like you're in your car. It's like a road yeah. trip, right? And it's open spaces. It's high-end hotels. So uh, in theory, it should be, you know, as clean as a hotel can be. Uh, and, um, and the only thing that was concerning was possibly that there are um, – Group, there's normally under under normal circumstances group dinners, which they just in the in the in the coronavirus update they said there will not be group dinners. There will be socially distanced dinners. Which okay, that's a bummer, but it is. But like yeah, duh, right. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel okay about it. I think. I think it's. I think when I've seen videos of what people were doing over July Fourth weekend and shit, and I know that's not the majority of people by any means, but like I feel like. Mental state road trip while being as safe as possible outweighs just sitting in LA, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I really don't know. And I don't even, I mean, it's so weird to be in California dealing with this because as far as I can tell from everything that, you know, the car people are posting in every other state, ain't nobody else giving a fuck. Like, I know, right? right? <laughs> um, so, well, yeah, I don't know. Like, you should feel better. Like Italy held a rally a week or two ago, uh -huh. like a nice, you know, old sports cars kind of rally thing. I mean, if anyone was going to be extremely cautious, it would be Italy after all this shit. Yeah. And I think it seems like they deemed that event safe enough that they could host it. Well, Italy is it, doing so. better than us by a lot right now. I know, but in the beginning, <laughs> Italy was terrible. Oh, yeah, so, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it just speaks to like, you can be separate from other people. You can be in your own car. Yeah, you don't I think this is the kind of thing that's the kind of thing that's probably all right. Sleep in the car. No. Yeah, sleep in the Lamborghini Urus, the Urus. which I probably could <laughs> yeah, actually. Got a lot of room back there. I don't think it'd be that comfortable. Right. For you? No, no not for like, me. No. Well, maybe um, you, would a camping mattress fit back there? Oh shit! Just sold them. <laughs> just sold the inflatable mattress. My wife mattress. just sold them on next door. <laughs> That'd be we great. really cleaned out everything. We yeah. got it all. It's, it's all gone. That's not quite enough. When we when we had the four uh, Jeep Rubicon four door for drive, um, with the front with the seats down, the distance from the closed tailgate or whatever it's called the hatch all the way to the front seats was five feet nine inches, <laughs> and, and it was for Spinelli. I was like Spinelli, how tall are you? He's like five eight. Yes. I like I guess I should be glad I never got that extra inch I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, it's there's not as much space in behind the front seats of a car as you think. No. Unless it's yeah. like a van. I mean, yeah. I um I am the exact right size for um for driving the Edelbrock Celica and for sleeping in cars, and I love sleeping in cars. Like like I sleep so good in cars. Um, like a moving car or a parked car. Either one. Really? Yeah. I just, What's your perfect your car for car. sleeping in? Um. What have I slept in recently? Well, I mean, you know, a truck is a truck is good for sleeping in because I can go right across the back. Um, any seventies uh, four door with a big bench seat. I, so I guess of my own cars, like I took the Polara up to uh, Pismo one once for a, they were doing like a buggy rally back when those sort of things happened, and uh, and so I just slept in the Polara. Like I had a pillow and a blanket, and it was great. Like. I mean, not only did I get it onto the dunes and off the dunes, which I am very proud of, but also, yeah, I slept in it. And I remember when I got there, when, the next morning when I was like getting out, I'm all like sleepy. You know, the problem with car sleeping though is that you just get really sweaty. Yeah. Um, and then this, you know, one of the guys came out of- uh, You gotta choose bugs or sweat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guy comes out of the RV and he's like, you know, I just wanted to tell you, I, I saw you coming in the other day and I was like, oh, she's gonna get stuck, but you didn't get stuck. And I was like, yeah, that's right. Because you're a fucking champ, That's dude. right. That's awesome. Because you know how to do it. What I would do is I would go windows down, and I'd get a big bug net and throw it over the whole car. Like, I would tent the entire car <laughs> in a bug net. How do you and tent then put it the windows from down. within the car? Like a, you, uh, like I mean, a, you could do it. You could you just weigh it. You know, you weigh yeah, it down with yeah. something. You could get in it, get in the tent. You'd leave one, like, leave one side up on the roof and then pull it in. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to be, like, a perfect seal, but, like, you know, ninety percent. I was bug, just imagining you like get you in there. Bug, and you're saying, you're like, "Great job!" And they're like, "I'm not in there." <laughs> <laughs> I painted myself in a corner. Didn't exactly. I? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just stand here too. Yeah, I'd, I'd tent the whole car, or at least the uh, you know the cab. Yeah, that would yeah. work. <laughs> Sleeping in cars, I don't know. It's just 
it always seems like a good idea or a necessary idea, depending on the situation. Better than sleeping on up. the ground. If your alternative is the ground. Do you want to sleep in that? That's fine. I mean, on our all cars go to heaven too. The back of my van was a way better place. That's it had around. a fucking mattress in it. <laughs> that was you different. spend your money how you want. Right. I'll She's spend my money how I want. She's talking about how sleeping in, in this on the seat. You know, if, yeah. you, if you turn the car into an apartment, of course it's better. I mean, yeah, I mean, a van right. with a bed is is the way to go as long as it's Absolutely. your bed and not someone else's. Good point. True. Um, did I see you say that you finished and delivered your book? <laughs> Oh my God, I did. How uh, exciting. Uh, on Monday, yeah. Um, are, yes. you, are you nervous? Are you just relieved? Are you happy? Um, what, is your, what is your state of mind right now? And tell us I, about the book. <laughs> so um, I, for the past almost two years, I've been working with the drag racer Don Prudhomme um, on writing his, his biography. So it's really, I guess it's his autobiography told to me, put into written word by me. Um, and it's been... It's been a challenge. It was a challenging time to do it. Um, my mom got sick and died at the beginning of the project. Um, and then uh, coronavirus happened at the end of the project. So it's definitely not been ideal working circumstances for anybody taking on a big project, but we did it. And, um, and we just finished the last layout edits and I mailed it back to the publishing company and it should be, it's available for pre-order already and it should be out in the stores in October. Oh, sick. Can you, is it, where do you get a pre-order? Um, no, I, think, I don't want to plug Amazon if I can. No, it, um, <laughs> Barnes and Noble I think has it for pre-order, and I'm All sure right. that I'm sure that if you go to your favorite local um, bookstore, I'm sure Auto Arrow Books has has contacts, um, and it's called uh, Don the Snake Prudhomme. I think My Life Beyond the 1320. I don't know. I didn't do the title, but something like that. And uh, it's, it's. I mean, that's a tell, that's such a weird thing because I can relate because I don't write the own my own titles and my fucking shit either. And sometimes, bless their hearts, the editor writes a terrible one. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, it's not even a terrible one. I just it's like I can never remember it because I I didn't write it. I mean, it's weird I feel that like, you didn't write it. Did you yeah. did you want to? Did you did you have a title in you that was overridden by some corporate um, decision, or were you just kind of like? I mean, I think I probably it? would have been just more more simple on it. Um, but they, I think they really wanted to to point out that this was about his life and not just his racing. So you know, he was fine with it. That was the thing is like, uh, I wrote I wrote a lot of it, but it's it's really his. You know, it's really Don's book. So if he liked things, I didn't fight about him, even if I was like meh. Um, yeah. And did, it wasn't like I hated it. I just I wouldn't have done it. But did this was your idea or his? And he and he approached you. Um, he came to me. The, nice. I guess oh, the cool. publisher came came to him, and we'd worked together on some stories before. And so he asked me, which yeah is, I I don't know. I can't even describe to you what that feels like. It's good. <laughs> it feels very cool. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, and I was really worried about doing it too because everyone I've ever talked to who's written a book with someone else has said, okay, you got to be prepared for having some spats, maybe not really being friends for a little while afterwards, you know, I mean, it's a big, you guys know, you've been working together for a long time. It's a big deal to work with another person on something that is intense and intimate. Um, and, you know, and Don really wanted to talk about things that he had never talked about before. He wanted to talk about his racial background. Um, he wanted to talk about his shitty, shitty family. He wanted to talk about growing up poor. And it was all stuff that he hadn't talked about before. So there would be times where we had to take breaks, like because it was just too emotional, like for one or the other or both of us. Um, and there were times where I was definitely irritating him by asking him the questions, but he would just be like, nope, no, I wanted this. And then he would get back into it. So it was, wow. it was really amazing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really honored that he trusted me enough to do it. Did you, did you uh, lead him with questions that were based on things that you were interested about his life? Or did you kind of be like, what do you want to talk about today, Don? <laughs> um, in the beginning, I would be like, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, and about a third of the way through, I was like, I need to organize this better because, um, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to put things into order. So then I made this... Uh, Actually, I have. Did he want to do it? Like, did he? Was it like I was born on a Thursday? I mean, literally start at at, um, at, at zero and work. He didn't. Forward? He didn't want to start that way, and so I made him go back and and like work through some stuff. And we started to get like he started to get into it more as he did. But like 
um, this is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is like the sheet that I made. It's like a mm. year by year sheet of like oh, what cool. car he was in. And then over here it has like various like family things that happened or, you know, like got married in 63 or, you know, what engine builder he was working with at the time. And so, so I had that and then I was able to kind of like fill in things there. And then I'd be like, we don't have enough interesting stories about this time. Let's talk about this time. Um, and, uh, you know, he was, he was really good about it. I think the hardest thing probably was talking about like the stuff towards the end, um, like the newer stuff. Cause he just doesn't, A, he hasn't told those stories as many times. So like he doesn't have, he do, you know, there's no like, established yeah. Yeah, story it's not to a bit. tell. It's not a bit. He doesn't yeah. do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know exactly, um, exactly what you mean. He, after a while, it's a, it's a bit you could just fucking call up. And yeah. Do, yeah. 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 It, and it's verbatim. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing that was really rad that he did what, um, was anytime he talked about somebody not super nicely, I was like, can I call this person and have them also in the book um, telling their side of it? And every time he was like, yes. So, yeah, anybody, anybody, uh, really put up a fuss about about their his his depiction of events of them? Um, no, um, everybody. I mean, people had different takes on it. You know, um, like he and Tommy Ivo, like to Tommy Ivo, the the um, TV Tommy is a famous drag racer at the same time, and that's where Don got his career started. He used to work for for Ivo, and they were like best friends, and then they really didn't like each other for a while, and they're even now and you know as they're in their late 70s and 80s um they're not in love with each other <laughs> but uh, but they were both actually really complimentary they were honest i mean they you know there's a line in the book where don's talking about being on tour with ivo and he's like it, it got to the point where i just couldn't fucking stand the way he poured salt on his food <laughs> wow <laughs> That's like that's see that's more like uh, bandmates than real yeah. like competitors and because drag racing is so interesting because in the way that the because like a, a a drag racing beef it's not like these are cars that are rubbing you know at two hundred miles an hour it's like if 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 you're risking the other guy's life in drag racing like you have fucked up you're not right. doing that <laughs> that's not intentional that's a mechanical or or something's gone horribly wrong it's not like fuck this guy, I'm going to rub it. You know what I mean? That's, that's not how drag racing right. works. Like you're just, you know, you want to go faster than the other guy, but it doesn't, I, I don't take away from it that, that, that hatred and loathing the same way I could see it in a NASCAR where There's guys no are literally side. rubbing into you at 200 miles Is an it, hour, you know? I, I think that's true. Um, I mean, there were certainly, there was certainly heated competition between guys just because they were both up for the same championship or they were, you know, each one wanted to be the first to run 200 or something. But when they didn't like each other, it was normally either because of something uh, unrelated to the racetrack. Like, you know, like Prudhomme tells a couple of stories about guys he didn't like because they were rich kids whose daddies bought them all their car stuff. Uh -huh. And he's just like, I hated those guys, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Um, it's like, dude, I'm 74. <laughs> he's still mad. He's still mad. Your um, fucking dad. It's like, yo, I have grandkids. <laughs> it's really funny, man. You start talking to people and you realize nobody ever thinks they've grown up. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I, there wasn't, um, there wasn't the kind of, like when I've talked to NASCAR people, there is genuine hatred between oh, some yeah. NASCAR racers for stuff. Um, and I think with drag racing, there's guys, they like each other more or less, you know, I mean, I think Shirley Muldowney has some pretty, pretty yeah. bitter feelings towards some people, but again, it's not really about what happened on the racetrack. That's so interesting with NASCAR. It's all about what happens on the track. And then with, with this, it's all about whatever the, it's like the band drama. Yeah. It's like, is it's it that, hilarious. And so, is it like engine building, cheating, you know, not cheating, but like, if someone finds a rule, a way around a rule and, and they're clever and someone is like a very by the book person, like, cause this doesn't have the, the combativeness of wheel to wheel racing. So yeah. is that where a lot of the animosity comes from with them? Like, cause so much of the um, racing is done in the shop, so to speak. I mean, I can't speak for every single drag racer, but from the successful ones that I have interviewed. And at this point I have interviewed a lot of them. <laughs> um, they generally, they would be mad at the time that somebody had outthought them, but they would actually, they're all 
actually pretty impressed by anybody, who, you know, like when, guy, when guys talk about Don Garlitz, you know, figuring out how to do the rear engine or, you know, figuring out how to use the 426 Hemi or whatever, they're generally, they're, they're impressed and then they steal the ideas like that, yeah. you know, like they're, um, you know, so they're not. Well, it's not like, and drag racing is not a spec series. It's not like, yeah. oh, you figured out a way to cheat and we're all supposed to use this same, you know, restrictor plate mm-hmm. hardware. It's pretty much at that level. In, it's just whatever you can do to go as fast as you can go, right? Yeah. I mean, in the sportsman classes where there are these, um, like, brackets where you can, yeah. like, blow the curve for people, those guys all hate each other and they're fucking whiners. Sorry, guys. I love y'all. Um, but Fuck like you bracket drag racers. <laughs> no, I mean, I was a bracket drag racer. Bro, I know. me and Larry used to do that shit but, back in the day, yo. There was but, a guy uh, back in the day. Did you have someone in your bracket drag days that would show up and, like, a rental car <laughs> or a family sedan, slow as fuck, because bracket racing is about running yeah. the same time over and over. Run like a 17 2, like clockwork. <laughs> like, I mean, every, he'd be eating an ice cream cone and just, just win the yeah. And like oh, 17 2s over and over. They win that all would, the money. The worst. That would be, that would be me. Um, my enemies were um, there was four door Nova cheater slick guy who I, I was just like uh, real mad at. There was the guy who ran the little sportsman dragster, and it's like, you can't beat a dragster. You don't yeah. even see where it is. You're like ahead of it. You're like, do I need to slow down? I should slow down. That ding goes right by you. And there was a guy who was on a motorcycle. And like those three people. Oh, and I would like always a- get nervous anytime I lined up next to a guy on a bike. I was like, this could go, this could go bad. I always those thought it would go bad. Yeah. Really yeah. crazy. Six yeah. second motorcycles. What? Yeah. Oh, and there was a grandma in a lightning, um, and I didn't. I didn't yes. hate grandma in the lightning. I loved her, but I always lost to her because she psyched me out. Um, and that—that that is something that the that the top level guys could what do, do you and think did you got do. Down there, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they'd, they'd psych each other out. You know, they play games at the starting line. There's some pretty famous like burn downs where a guy won't stage, and you know now you can't do any of that. They've changed all the rules, so can't really screw with <laughs> the guy. Him. Won't stage. That guy refused to stage. So, till he comes and shakes my head, I refuse to stage. That's interesting. You play the psychology and someone's sitting there going, because if someone's like amped and they're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, right? Yeah. And person yeah. goes, yeah, not it's getting yet. real hot well, in that car. You, Car's got, got no cooling. To... Right? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you don't want to sit there idling and you've already done the burnout, so the tires are warm. But it's like you've got the two, um, the two stages of staging. So, you know, you go in one and then the, you know, like – if the other guy doesn't doesn't go in, then it's like you're at this. Anyway. Yeah, then Weird you're the though. asshole sitting there yeah. overheating your engine, right? right. Yeah. Hoping it's, his engine overheats first, or her engine yeah. overheats. The first. old drag racing dance. That's drag racing <laughs> before the drag race starts. You're like, oh yeah, I bet your engine overheats before mine is. I haven't been to like a proper, you know, local quarter mile in a while. I think that'd be a fun thing to do, like it's, not in Los Angeles, like to pick a pick one and like. The one in Sonoma is great. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's real fun. It's yeah. like every Wednesday, Wednesday Night Drags. Yeah. We, we took the battle wagon up there. We ran like a 17 and a half yes. doing nothing, you know, whatever. You it's probably so win fun. money doing that. I better run Sa- 17 and a half every time. It's great. Sacramento has a, a good grudge night too. Usually oh, a lot yeah. of people there and like definitely not, you know, um, not fancy. I like it. You know how it's, it's always Sonoma like fancy? Ford That's versus only- Chevy okay. and import versus domestic. Why do they never come up with any new ones? Why is it never like Ford versus BMW? Like, why? Yeah. why how come it's never like Porsche versus Chevy? Because the BMW would lose most of them. I don't know, it but like, would. no one ever comes up with a different comparison night. It's always the same one. Ford versus Chevy is the bigger rivalry, though. Ford versus BMW, like, it's over yeah, it. guys showing up. <laughs> with bmws they're all gonna lose and then and then complain about like you know oh well today I, my check ends lights on because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> i just want to see some more variety i feel like i could i feel like i could go back to one of those nights it would be exactly the same as when i left it would be fun yeah though. yeah, yeah. It's it's noisy same. fun it's good though yeah, yeah. We need, do we have a good drag car coming up soon I mean, what if we brought a, a g63 <laughs> taking the fucking mini cooper there you want to bring a g-wagon no those driving those fast is so it's, stupid. I know, and not fun or rewarding. We have what's a what's a good a good drag? I mean, I suppose I have one in the garage right now. The Shelby is probably good. Yeah, that's yeah. a great one. Or anything with all wheel drive and launch control, which is just cheating. That Shelby, it's it drifts really nice too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the big turnout has a few more marks on it. It's, <laughs> it's really how exciting you, for your book though. Yeah do do you guys have a good 
you know, a closed course near you because uh, the other day I needed to do a burnout for a video and I like could not find a place that was not yes. full of people and police officers. I mean, was it a weekend? I don't recommend this on it's weekends. all the time. I mean, yeah, where, I mean, I just go film in the Angeles Forest. It's empty. I go right after yeah. sunrise on weekdays and you can, yeah, if you go to those big turnouts, you can do like drifty things and burnouts and nobody gives a shit. It's fine. <laughs> It's totally okay. Just don't, I mean, if you go off a cliff, like it might be a while before somebody finds you. So just yeah. consider that. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I mean, that was theoretical and you guys get permits and close course for everything. That right. do, oh, but, it's all yeah. good. Right. They ain't coming for us. Um, they don't I guess I just, you know, dude. I feel like it was only a few years ago where I could just go across the street to like where there's only one house on the other block and just like, rip as many burnouts as I want. And now I can't do that anymore. There's a lot of like uh, I, RVs everywhere. Yeah, yeah well, like, there's that's a thing. Industrial districts, I think part of it is just getting older and not wanting to risk it. But when I get to industrial district and I just see tire marks everywhere. <laughs> I was down in Torrance the other day yeah. and there was just snakes and coils. And <laughs> like, man, people come down and have a really good time. Yeah, it gets real quiet at but night in some yeah, of these places. If you're, and even honestly, like up in, the, up in Malibu, like we were where we were filming mm -hmm. today, up on uh, burnout mark like Huge. i went down decker you know we were filming at the top of decker and then i i went down decker to pch the the bottom half of decker gets fucking mongied with with <laughs> <Yeah>. the regularness <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> i saw some radiuses today i was like this yeah is really there nice. is a there is a weekly mongy session <laughs> uh, up there Zach, I think you might be right. I think I've just gotten old and afraid of getting in trouble. Yeah. Like, I, probably nothing's changed. I even I used to just like do burnouts, you know, All the at time. stoplights. Yeah. No, I, you were older now. I think that's kind of silly now. I used to love stuff like that. I used to do huge burnouts in every car. And now I just, I don't even give a shit anymore. I'm so lame now. I still no. think they're great. I just don't want to get in trouble wearing my tires out. Well, I, I, I mean, and um, when I'm in a car that isn't mine, I, I want to not, uh, you know, what with the whole getting a paycheck because of what I do. I, I mean, every time I'm going to do burnouts in press cars. If I get a Hellcat. But yeah, yeah, car. but you can't get arrested in a press car. No, but you know what? Honestly, if you did, I think that'd be fine. I mean, honestly. Well, maybe if, in a Hellcat. If, I mean, I feel like about, Dodge would be okay with that. Yeah, but you like most, stop, yeah. You know, I don't know I'm, about Mercedes. I'm thinking of most of the guys I know and women, men and women who put me in cars. And if I called them and said, I was either, either uh, getting drifty on the big turnouts or going very, very fast and I was arrested, I think they'd be okay. I don't think they'd be mad. I think they'd be like, well, uh, uh, all right. I think they would be like, They'd be like, is it on the news? And how bad, like, how good does it look? <laughs> right. I, I mean, look, if you did something that was truly bad, I mean, if you, you know, if, if, you, if you injured someone really bad, if you, had, if you did a Dewey or something, you know, you did something bad, they'd hang you out to dry in two seconds. But if you just got arrested for speeding in one of their press cars or doing something that's pretty much cost to doing business for us, <laughs> I think they'd be like, well, okay. They kept giving, Har <laughs> they, they kept giving Harris cars in 2010, 11, 12, and 13. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah, but that was the old days it when was, there yeah. were no rules. They like paid, it, they used to true. pay journalists tickets back, you know, like you read like the old stuff like David E. and yeah. Jay Jennings and stuff. And it's like, we went down to Mexico and then we crashed into a cow. So we just left it there and flew home. And then it's like, so then we had to get another one to finish the story. And then it's like, I don't think maybe. they'd let me do that. That's so fucking funny. That's, That's totally spot on. That's a really good. Did, did that actually happen or did you just That come did up happen. With that? I didn't make that up. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure that exact. No, yeah, it's that exact thing. That thing happen. definitely happens. Yeah, that definitely happens. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I, <laughs> I think you, you have to be a little better than that now. But yeah. no, I used to be very juvenile about doing burnouts and stuff in every car. And now, if I have an opportunity to see how it drifts, I will try that in a safe place. But yeah. but that's uh, but that's that's it. I just I I think um, I don't know. We grow up, man. We're, we're I hate a, it. We're a little more adulty. That's okay. I don't know about you, but fucking my thirties are like way better than my twenties. Burnouts be damned. <laughs> um, well, I couldn't drive stick in my twenties, so I will say that you know, once I learned how to drive stick, that was superior. Yeah, that gets you a long, long way. Yeah, it's good. Fun. I don't, 
I don't controversial uh, hot take. I don't wish the GT500 would stick. Um, I, having driven the manual Hellcat, I also don't wish that the GT500 would stick. <laughs> but I do, I do wish that it had a a physical shifter and not a rotary shifter. Um, oh, you I don't just, like the knob. Oh. I find the knob. Um, in any, I find the knob and push buttons in any context to be extremely disappointing for um, like fast shift, you know, shift change maneuvers, like, like three yeah, point turns. turns. And I know that that's probably not something that most people do nearly as often as someone who's a journalist having to do like turns all the time for photographers. But yeah. um, I just, it feels so twee and not like, as opposed to like a, uh, uh, it's just really unsatisfying. Um, I know what you mean. A little, but but it probably wouldn't be a tr an automatic feeling lever like you'd get with the automatic GT. Well, it's all it buttons now. Yeah. It's just buttons. Oh, it's the GT the buttons? No, no, I'm just saying like a lot of the cars now, even if it's an automatic lever. Yeah, no, it's a lever. It's, it's a, a joystick. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's electric because they, yeah. you know, and I mean, I, I just did, um, oh, so I do have a bit of news. Um, I'm ready to call him for car and driver now. Oh, nice. Sweet. Congratulations. Yeah. How good. Thank you. What's the, um, it makes me feel very thing? important. It's yeah. just whatever I want to write about. It's very oh, really? cool. That's really like yeah. Like I mean, I'm going to do it until column. they, yeah. I mean, eventually they're going to realize that I'm super lame and they're going to you know, get someone else in there. But in the meantime, I can write about whatever I want to. And the one that I just turned in recently was um, a series of interviews with automo like automotive designers about shifter design. Oh, because cool. I was like, I'm like, why are they suddenly different? They've been like Prindle levers either on the column or on the console forever since like 65. Why are yeah. they suddenly all different? And um, it was interesting, you know, that some of it was um, because they do have electronics now and they and because people need so much more space for like uh -huh. phones and things. So, yeah. so being able to remove those physical connections and make more space in a console um, I need seven cup holders. Yeah. For big gulps. Well, see the new F one fifty. I need to have an I iPad on the dash and an iPhone. The new F one fifty. It has a lever, but it folds down into oh, it, I and saw then that. it, which is really clever. And I think that's just the gateway to getting rid of the shifter altogether. They're like, yeah. you do this for this generation, and the next generation, it'll just be buttons like they have in Acuras because it kind of like the, we had this BMW uh, or sorry Mini Cooper with the BMW shifter, and today I was trying to three point turn. And I came to like most of a stop and then try to drop it from reverse back into drive. So in, in a normal automatic transmission, it would have worked. Yeah. But because I wasn't perfectly stopped, my foot depressed the right amount on the brake, it just went to neutral, which was more dangerous. Uh, so I was like yeah. in the middle of the road. Now you're confused neutral. in neutral. Now it's confused yeah. in neutral. <laughs> and so I think like- Is that the name of your, that's gonna be your autobiography? Do you want me to help you neutral? write it? <laughs> confused in neutral. Uh, so if, if you have a the lever is hitting a button that's also not effective, I would rather just get rid of the lever. Yeah, and just have the buttons. You know, depending I don't mind on the, car, the buttons but, or the puck. I'm okay. I'm actually okay with those. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm used. I guess I'm used I like to them. The puck. It's quicker than buttons. Puck is fine. Yeah, I'm all yeah. right with it. I don't. What I don't like is in Jaguars the rich and the Range Rover the retracting puck. Right. I feel like that's a recipe for disaster. Totally. That's gonna Ford be just kept the puck static. And <laughs> what's funny about the GT500 is like the shifter used to cause all kinds of problems with the cup holders because if you had a beverage there yeah. you had to backhand it and it's like guys this cup holder design is a problem it's like i got it get rid of the shifter right you right. go no wait no that's not what i meant <laughs> <laughs> hey man priorities priorities um no, yeah the i mean, make the dual clutch is game changer yeah it is good i admit it what's your favorite alternative shifter um I mean, I, I don't really like any of the alternative shifters. <laughs> um, I. Uh, what about like old school ones, like pre-selectors? Oh, oh, the um, the lightning rods, the Hurst old lightning rods. <sighs> that's that's the way to do it. I've never actually driven one of those. I've only played with one in in a parking lot. Do you haven't, have, like, Zach just made a face. Have you never seen those? I just forgot. I didn't know what they were called, but yeah, like, you, like could a, you could get a you could get an Oldsmobile with three shift drivers. <laughs> you, oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't a factory like this? Yeah, yeah. it's a stock option, dude. Top fuel cars. Yeah. yeah. Do you oh, wait? So I forget. That is so how do you crazy. how do you make them work? I think the one on the left is just the regular automatic. 
Yeah, I think, and then the like the other two are for if you're going to the drag strip. Yeah, um, it, it, so it's three levers, and from right to left, the right one, the rightmost one says one, the middle one says two, yeah. and then the left one is park, reverse, neutral, drive, drive. Right, so I think if yeah. you put the left one all the way down into ma what you'd call manual mode, and you could then just bang off first and second because it might have just been a fucking three speed on oh, the right. sure, for sure it was. <laughs> oh, I mean, funny. and like a lot of the cars from yeah. from that era had um, they had some sort of drag race specific shifter. Like my Challenger has like a, a lockout. The little button comes up, so if you put it in first and the button's up, then you can slam it forward into second, and then you push the button into third or maybe oh, it's push cool. the button into second and then you slam it into third. And that way it's like a reverse lockout. So you don't go into reverse, but you can shift through the gears in the drag race back when you could shift faster than the uh, transmission could. The uh, Zach's got a advertisement up for the Hearst Olds and it, <laughs> it is incredible. It looks like someone is furiously jacking off a shifter. <laughs> <laughs> It says, it says grab hold grab of hold some of lightning, lightning and turn it <laughs> loose. <laughs> that I Oldsmobile think, got me too. <laughs> did was it Buick or Oldsmobile? One of them had a his and her shifter too, which was oh funny. the his what? and hers. Yeah. yeah, that shit was mad sexist. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> well, I also a, a friend of mine back in the day had put a Lenko in mm. their drag car which was like the lightning rods, but it had one lever per gear. So it was yeah. a four-speed Lenko, and you would just go, and, and, and you just go first, second, third, fourth. It was fucking the coolest. Thing. Yeah, and then like later they now they're they're back and forth the Lenko. Oh, they so, they just yeah. put a sequential shifter on the. Mm -hmm. yeah, it seems like yeah. you don't need all four levers. You could really yeah. just pull one four times. <laughs> but it looked really cool. Oh, it was awesome, dude. I, and and I actually asked. I asked if he ever have you ever seen like a street car or like a like a road course car with it with a setup like that? I've only ever seen it on a drag car. Um I mean I've seen them in street cars because people were street racers or, you know, I mean hot rod mm. drag week uh, kind of things. Yeah. Um I don't know how I mean it doesn't seem like you would see it in a road race car because it's a automatic shifter, right? Oh, I guess it is a torque converter. Yeah. Thing. I mean, I, I'm, supposed, I'm sure at least one person tried what it. I, what I'm really getting at is I've never seen someone try to like fast downshift one. I've oh, only yeah. ever seen people upshift ones. Like, do they go down? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and it might, I, it might automatically downshift because, you know, like some of those things. As soon as it, you let them release it's a, the pressure yeah, off. Yeah, it's only yeah. about, you know, um, like if you went back down to – to a stop, maybe it would just yeah, be yeah, in person. Yeah. I don't know. I don't it just tell apart. us if you know, but so I don't know. No, Zach pulled up the his and hers. It's amazing. It's, it's incredible. Like the left side is a straight line, like a normal automatic transmission, like park, neutral, drive. And then you can bring the shifter over to the right. It's, it's, it's all like a lowercase h. And then you have one, two, and three. It, but the copy is like, for her, the ideal piece of mind of an automatic transmission plus an extra bit of admiration Wait, for it, quote, her man. <laughs> Wait, uh, say that again. Basically, it's saying like, women will only want to use an automatic and shift in a straight line. You don't want to be bothered with shifting, but for guys who are the real helmsmen of these cars, you can shift one, two, and three. Mm. Yep. No, that's the case. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These women will never understand what one, two, and three are yeah, for. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, who wants to do all that work? Honestly, I am kind of like that with paddle shifters, so I don't know. Maybe they were right. Look, Anything we can we, we can let them drive. We can let them drive, but if they get their period while they're trying to shift one, two, and three, the whole world's going to just collapse. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's too much to think about. Um, <laughs> fuck, this is amazing. I didn't yeah. know this existed. Yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. That's it's, it's bad. It's, yeah. How long? What, that was like, what, 70s? 70s? 60s, 70s, 60s, 70s, right? Yeah. Maybe 60s. Oh, was, I don't know. It all blurs together. I wasn't around. It doesn't matter. That's funny. And the actually, the ad like, is really bad because the way they line up the copy with his and hers, they actually have hers over the manual true. side and his over the automatic side. Maybe we're the ones being sexist. I know. Maybe it was actually designed that way. 
Hey, Steve, you misread the copy. Oh, this, is cocaine. <laughs> this is the cocaine era. So someone put this together in the middle of the night and they just didn't even notice. And then everybody went and got like a, a cocktail lunch. Oh, no. Power <laughs> lunch. Power lunch. <laughs> Slide that thing over to his. We're going to lunch. <laughs> when, like, like feminism had finally worked, but like the, the, pe- the people that were making these things hadn't really understood what they should be doing. And they're like, oh, okay, we get it. Oh, well, okay, we'll help out. We'll help yeah. out. Like, no, this is... Yeah, that's like taking Aunt Jemima off the fucking pancake package instead of like having qualified immunity. (laughs) And on that, or ending qualified immunity, excuse me. That's how you know the whiskey's working. Yeah. Um, Your book, pre-order it. Yeah. Plug it. Um, You can pre-order the Don Snake Prudhomme, uh, My Life Beyond the 1320, I think is what it's called. And um, it is, you can get it at Barnes and Noble and uh, it's even better if you get it at your local bookstore. And um, you can find me all over the goddamn place. But uh, you write for everybody, for everyone. But most most of the stuff recently has been either video for Edmonds or um, writing for Car and Drivers. So yeah, are they gonna do one of those awesome little sketch drawings of your face for the head of your column? They did. They already did, and they you can find did? it. Yeah, and um, oh, and I think it so actually, it makes my hair look really good, so I like it a lot. Oh, and Tom and I have a video channel on YouTube. If you want to see more of that Corvette. Oh, what is it? It's What's Challenge it Her. Oh, yeah. Challenge Her. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lana's easy. Instagram Challenge Her and YouTube Challenge Her. Yeah. So there and you go. Zach is struggling. It was so nice to the see you guys. Works. Thank you for coming Thank over you. virtually. I really and appreciate it. I got to see it. the cats and I got to see a little tiny bit of Hannah. Did you see so, a little bit of the cats? I saw Did the you? cats in the very beginning. Nikki was there for a second and Hannah is downstairs and we miss you and we will see you very you soon. Too. Thank you for I miss joining. all of you. I miss everyone out there. We're going to have a new studio soon and mm-hmm. it'll be great. And there it is. Challenge her. Go subscribe to Challenge Her on YouTube. It would be Yay. really nice if you did. We we're will. bad. We're click, bad. We click, don't edit anything. Seat. We totally suck. You got a great <laughs> photo of your driveway, and it's just full of old muscle. Oh my god, that yeah, is your bad. Your header photo is your driveway, and it's good. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that photo is like the cars don't match the resolution of this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you for coming. We love Thank you. Thank you guys. We'll see you so soon. Congratulations see you soon. on the book and Thank the you. column, a car and driver, and all these things you're doing yeah i mean eventually people will figure out that i suck but until then i'm gonna make hay don't let them know keep riding this wave <laughs> see you soon the smoke entire podcast is powered by shout engine get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. it's easy all you need is a microphone a connection to the internet you don't even need a studio which i wish we had but we don't it's okay i swear it's fine uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week bye <laughs>